I was doing a webinar this morning and the question of materials came up. So let's cover materials. I've got a wall here and you'll notice that it's got some graphic style to it. So here I've got lining and I've got insulation and I've got my siding on it. And this is a normal wall style. But instead of using classes to control my materials, I've used materials. This is a structural element or a structural member and I've used materials. I've got a landscape area which uses materials. So I'm going to go through several of these. I can't go through all of them, but I'm going to go through most of them. Now the first thing is, if I let's just start with something simple like a structural member, the idea of a material is to give a texture and a graphic style to this object. Now in the past we used to use a class. So we'd use a class for this graphic style, we'd use a different class for this graphic style here. But what if I wanted to turn both of those structural members off at the same time? Then I can't because they've got different graphic styles and I've used classes for it. The idea of a material is to remove classes as a graphic style for textures. We can use materials for that. But materials are much more than just a texture and material also carries other information. Let's start with this column here. This is a structural member. If I click on select shape, I get the ability to assign material here. And when I use material here, it knows what line weight to put on there. It knows what texture to put on there. This is what the texture will look like in a rendered view. This is what a top view will look like. And this is what a, a view using hidden line render will look like. If I chose a different texture like corrugated metal, then what we get is we get this in plan. We get this in a rendered view and this is what it would look like in a hidden line render. So I'm going to um, escape from that because I don't want to change it. This material, we have a look, is using a default material and I want to change that and I want to call it galvanized steel. So let's look at galv. I think I've saved, looked for that recently. So I'm going to use galvanized steel, double click, and it's now got galvanized steel. So both of those objects have now got the same material. Now a material in Vectorworks is a resource, which means that we can copy it from file to file. In fact, it's, an, it's a completely new resource called materials. Now if I look in this file here and we have a look, we've got galvanized steel. So let's right click and we'll edit the galvanized steel. So a material is more than just the color, the fill, the line style and the texture, because it also includes information about it. Here's a description of that galvanized steel. We have the construction, what its category is. We're going to look for volume and component areas as well. We've got a reference. We could have a manufacturer. So this might be red steel. Uh, that's a local company. Um, but we also have physical options here. So there's my specific gravity. There's my specific heat here. We could also put in the density, which I forget what it is, but it's about five tons per cubic meter. We could also attach a record if we wanted and attach custom information to this material. You know, we could attach, um, you know, it, it's CO2 values or something like that. But there's its embedded carbon there. And I could put that in right now. OK, so that's the idea of a material is that it saves us having to use classes to control the graphic style of things this object here. I'm going to actually go to settings for this because this also has cover to it, which I've chosen a concrete paver. I should really choose gypsum or something like that. So it's got gypsum board as a cover. And then I've got the select shape up here, which allows me to control the galvanized steel for the structural component. Because this is a structural member with a cover, I can have one type of material for the steel and a different type of material for the cover to it. And there it is. You can see I've got my gypsum there and I've got the steel on the inside. Now this little dark area here is just a shadow from something else. So that's the idea behind materials, that we can assign the graphic style of the objects without thinking about what class that needs to be on. We can now use classes purely to control the visibility of objects. Now this is a slab object. So when we look at the, the shape and the data and the render, we don't see the ability to put the materials. If we click on components, we still don't see the ability to put materials on until we edit that material. 
when we edit the slab components there's my ability to put the material and you can see in the section fill it'll put that hatch it'll put my texture and I can choose the pen that I want this is a hardscape when we look at hardscape we look down here and there looks to be nothing to do with materials if we look at our major slab components you might notice this looks very similar to my slab settings and there they are here oh, it looks like I've spelt that one wrong just one eye there paving let's double click on that we'll open it up and there's my material has it got a concrete base there's my material for the concrete base so you can now build a hardscape up out of a series of components that represent the real life construction of that system what have we got here we've got a landscape area and again we've got edit components this button here when we open that you can see it's very much like a slab structure and we can apply a material to that and we can have mulch and topsoil and so on so it becomes really powerful I'm just going to undo that because I didn't want to make that change there we are, that's better and let's have a look over here we've got the same ability with roofs this is a roof if we look at the settings for this and this is a style so I need to go and edit my style edit the style and here we have insulation this has got a class called component exterior finish and so on now one of the things I used to use was I used to use a lot of classes here to control the graphic style of my roof but I don't need to do that anymore with materials let me show you what I've done to my walls uh, now this wall here let's have a look at Tom Cottage because I think I've used a similar style of wall here so in Tom Cottage let's have a look at wall styles uh, there's my Titan board wall now if I were to edit this you would find that there would be a class for this and a class for the outside let's go back to my what you get here it is here so what have I done to this wall well let's have a look at it let's edit my style now what you might notice is that I've now got a series of classes almost everything's on the non-structural class except for my framing and then I have a non-structural class for my lining so if we have a look at this let's double let's double click on that to open it and you can see I've used material for the lining I've used material for the cavity and I've used a different material for the cladding so I've chosen the materials which give me the graphic style that I want if we just have a look around here you can see I've got my um, my siding on there let's turn the view around the other way and you can see I've got my drywall on the inside and I've got my cavity there's a cavity in here so I've managed to get all the graphic styles I want but now I've only got let's have a look let's get rid of that if you have a look at my classes I've got a non-structural class that's everything except for my frame so that should make it a lot easier for me to manage things like my walls if I want to see just the structural part that's the non-structural part now it's shown I've got structural so I've got a, this very quick way of turning things on and off now because I've got a non-structural class that controls absolutely all of those components that are not structural so when I come to set up my drawings it should be a lot quicker for me to just choose structural and non-structural for my classes and set up my drawings that way so one of the ideas I've been told is that Vectorworks are looking to reduce the number of classes to create pieces like this where we use materials to control that I like materials I've been using them a little bit lately and I'm finding them to really useful to assign the graphic style to my objects now some objects like this one here this column you'll find that there's a limited use for materials on this particular one if we go to classes of materials I end up assigning it to the entire architectural part I can't assign the capital a different material to the base for example now I could do that if I wanted to use classes and use classes here I can assign different classes to the shaft the capital and the base but I can't yet use materials for those components maybe in the future I can just now no what's the subject here the subject is a slab it's got components so we can add additional components and we can use materials 
let's just edit that so I can use materials on those if I wanted to I'm not on this particular one and my roof I can use materials on that as well so that's just a quick introduction to materials I think you should start using them they not only replace textures they also replace the fill and they also contain information about the weight the density maybe even the cost and the embedded co2 of those materials it's pretty cool if you want to really improve your vectorworks knowledge join my knowledge base find the movies you need but also attend regular monthly webinars where we can answer your questions thanks for watching